Welcome to the Press On Podcast. Join me as we uncover the journeys and lifestyles of top industry professionals and entrepreneurs, learning the secrets of their achievements. I am your host, Jan Larison. And welcome back to the Press On Podcast. I'm Jan Larison, and this is Ricky Reese. Hi. We're, uh, well, we're not going to be live, but today we're live in Arizona on Chuck Wagon Road. Uh, things haven't gone quite as planned in the last couple of months, so we, uh, we were supposed to be back on with a podcast, but um, we're here now. We're pressing on, and I'm super excited to have Ricky here. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And so, Ricky, you wear a lot of hats, pardon the pun with, uh, you know, <laughs> Cody's cowboy hats, but I think that everybody sees you um, on social media because you have such an awesome presence there, and... They kind of want to know, like, where'd this girl come from? Like, what is she about? What, how, what, it, what got her going and what made her who she is today? But before we go into that, <laughs> we've got to give a little salute to our boy, Toby Keith. Yes. Red cheers. Solo Cup. Solo cheers. So, yep. 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 <laughs> yep. I forgot that. We've been listening to his music while in Arizona. Yes. So that's been good. <laughs> yes, we have. So, um, yeah, just how did you get started? What was your brainchild for Frosted Cowgirls? And... Just tell us about Ricky. You don't even have to start with Frost Cowgirl. Start from where well, you grew I, up. Well, I grew up in Pocatello, went to school at U of I, and got an ag education and teaching degree for um, an ag communications and teaching degree. So I thought I needed to work in agriculture, which I love, love so much. And so I, I took a job in Pendleton, Oregon, for a while for Blue Mountain Community College, then got the opportunity to work for University of Idaho again in Emmett as an extension educator and started that when I was, I think I was 23 or 24. So I'm sure you've stepped into an extension office before. My, mo- my mother and, used to work for yes, one. Okay. Yeah. So I was a 24 year old little blonde girl, wide eyed, had no clue what I was actually supposed to be doing in that job. And I had all these farmers and ranchers come in and they would ask me these questions and kind of look at me with my big earrings. They always teased me because I would have hoop earrings in and they're just like, who is this girl and why is she in here? And over time I got to know all of them and became like great friends with a lot of them and was able to do a lot of workshops and classes for them. And I mean, I learned a lot along the way. I didn't know how to spray pesticides when I started that job. I didn't, you know, there was a lot of things I had to learn. And so I started, I did that for 12 years and I always had a huge, you know, I guess drive or passion for Western looks and fashion and styles. And so being an extension, it was hard to portray that because yeah. I was working with farmers and ranchers who were old school. The person that worked there before me that had retired had been there for 45 years. Mm-hmm. He was 75 years old. And I was 24, blonde girl. Like, they were yeah. like, who are you? With a fa- wish th- like a fashionista, <laughs> yeah. if you will. Yeah, and they all thought I was like, what the heck? And so, I mean, I, 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 was, I was there for 12 years. It became where they respected me, and I respected them. It was all good, but I always had that drive. Well, after our kids were born and our oldest started kindergarten, I was trying to get her, and I mean, I guess back up, we have a trucking company, and Cody was on the road a lot then, back in the day, hauling cows everywhere. So I was kind of single momming it a lot, and I we lived in New Plymouth. I worked in Emmett, which is 30 miles apart, getting my kid to kindergarten and then trying to get her picked up at 3.30, and then I would haul butt back to Emmett to work and then teach night classes. So it just got to where it was so hard to be a mom and do my job good too and do my mom job good and do all the things good. So I felt like somebody else was always raising my kids and it was hard on me. So I don't know, it took, it actually, I, I came to Cody with the idea that I was just going to do the boutique full time because I kind of halfway started the boutique. Was we it online a, at first? No, it wasn't. We had the mobile trailer. Well, actually before we had the mobile trailer, I, well, I guess I can really tell the, the full story if you want the full story. Absolutely. But, That's why we're here. Uh, I, he had been shaping hats for a, I mean, just off and on, like whenever somebody would ask him to this little Western store in Ontario. So he'd go in and shape hats when somebody would buy hats or whatever 
like she'd pile them up and then he'd come in shape a bunch of hats so he was kind of known as a hat shaper then but didn't have a business then he kind of took over her hat you know supply hat ordering that kind of thing so he had a little side hat hustle i guess and <laughs> along with his trucking yes, business yes. and along with your extension service yes. and your now to be boutique yeah so okay. i decided i wanted to do a boutique and the, the it's crazy it was in june and i did not know i was well i guess I, i'll back up so cody lended me five thousand dollars to start up because I was like, well, I need money to start this boutique, and I want to do this. I want to have this side hustle. So he get, he lent me five thousand dollars, and I spent it all in about a week. I mean, I was ordering back then. It was zebra belts and oh yeah, like the BB Simons. The BB Simons. <laughs> it was a lot of uh, gun. You know, the pistol oh, look. Yeah. It was feathers. It was arrows. It was all the things. So I mean, I went crazy. I was gonna start this boutique. I come up with a name while watching How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days one Sunday. And no way. when he says, Frost Yourself, I was like, oh, that's the name, Frosted Cowgirls. Oh and my gosh, that's a so, great, that's such a great story. So I had, I'd started the LLC, did, you know, did all the things. And I was like, now I have to have products. So Cody loaned me the money. We weren't married at the time. And I spent it all, like I said, in about a week and had all this inventory coming, was very excited. And the day it all started coming in, I realized that something was off and took a pregnancy test, found out Rayleigh was coming. And so I was crying all upset and I'm like, I, I got to send all of this back. All of this has to go back. I mean, we, I'm, I'm going to have a baby. Oh my gosh. Like panicking. And Cody said, well, I think you better just learn how to sell it because I mean, that's dumb to send it all uh, back. Like word from the wise. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make a profit on this. And yeah. so I was like, oh, okay. So. There's That's how idea. it started. I started in totes. I had like five totes. I would go to people's house, set up on their couches, sell whatever I could. And then as soon as Rayleigh came, we started our first mobile trailer. And then if I remember right, because this is kind of how you and I got to know each other, you were selling stuff out of your house. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had and a little Cody, room in the yeah, house. you had a room yeah. in the house and then Cody uh, shaped yeah. hats in the garage, right? In the, in the beginning, and then yeah. our current house, we actually made a store in the bottom Correct. of it. Correct, yeah. And then it's just progressed over time. We've been doing it 12 years now, and now we have a store in Fruitland, and now we are got a mobile store on the road, too. So I yeah. know, which is so exciting. And an online store, yeah. And we will definitely get to that, but, like, what I'm wondering is, so how many businesses do you run, really, right now, between the two of you, between the little power couple, Cody and Ricky? What? Are, how many businesses? Four. Four. So yeah. you've got trucking. Frosty Cowgirls, the store, and I guess, and our arena. And your we, arena. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, which that's also exciting. And you guys are going to be putting on events there this year too, mm -hmm. right? Well, you'll have to tell us more about that. So I guess my question is, how do you manage it? How do you manage your, <laughs> your uh, time? And now that you do, so you don't just have one child now, and she's just turned 13. Yes. Super exciting. And then Clacy is... Nine. Nine. Yeah, and they're busy. Basketball, horse, volleyball, all the things. Yeah. Right. I don't know if I manage it that great. I just, every day I think, okay, this is the list in my head. These are my top priority things. This is the bottom of the barrel. And if I don't get to the bottom of the barrel, I have to be okay with it and move on mm -hmm. to the next day. Right. So I just try to prioritize, and that's the only way I can make it work. Right. So if you had any advice to give to someone that wanted to possibly create their own business, whatever it may be, whether it's in the cattle industry, the trucking industry, in the merchandising industry, like, what would you tell them? Did you, what did you do first besides just spend $5,000? <laughs> <laughs> I would probably take a class first. Since then, I've taken classes through Boutique Hub. We've taken, um, you know, financial management type classes, more business classes as you know, me and Cody have together. So I think I would start with more classes and get more knowledge before I just jumped in. Mm -hmm. The time there wasn't a lot offered. Right now, I mean, I feel like you get on Instagram or Facebook and everybody's offering a class, which is great. Right. So now there's a lot more opportunity to learn back then there wasn't. So looking back, I wish I would have had more of that in the beginning because I probably could have grown a little faster had I known. Right. I'm glad I grew how I did, but I, I could have been faster. So. I completely agree with you because I reverting to my business or Bob and I's business, I think that education is such an important part of it. 
And if I would have, I always say, if I would have only known then what yeah. I know now, yeah. I would have absolutely been into every sales education that I could have done, which, you know, I kind of OD on that now, and it annoys Bob a little bit, because <laughs> he's like, oh my gosh, just another thing that you're listening to, so that he kind of feels like sometimes if I listen to too many of them, it's making me feel inadequate. Yeah. But I don't really take it that way, because I just do it like, I can, I relate it to training horses. I just take a little bit from what everybody teaches me and then I come up with my own style. It might not be right, but it's mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just taking a little bit of education from everywhere that you've learned, you've created your own style. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's been the biggest thing is just start learning before you really jump in. Yeah. Because it'll save you some time in the long run. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, like a detailed business plan. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the other thing. Yeah. yeah. And the checks and balances of, you know, return on investment mm -hmm. and those kinds Knowing of things. how to price your stuff so yeah. that you actually make some money. And, yeah. 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 So a lot of things I didn't know in the beginning. I just jumped in. I, I really, there wasn't a lot of boutiques back then either that no. were doing anything like this. And so there was nobody to really call. So I just right. kind of did it. And I feel like a lot of people have piggybacked on you. Yeah, I've had, and I've. I've helped a lot that have called and asked questions, and I'm usually an open book. So I'm like, right. yeah, if you need help, let me know. Because I remember going through the hoops, like, right? How do I even set up at this show? Who do I even contact? Or you know, I didn't know you any bet. of it. So, well, and I think that says a lot about you that when you're an open book and you help people, because I really believe that you get what you give. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. and there's enough business out there for everyone. Yeah, not one person can clothe everyone. So no, you need them absolutely all. Absolutely <laughs> not. And it's like selling real estate. Not yeah. every not, not one every. person can sell every house to everybody no. or have the expertise on every every single thing. No. And you wouldn't be able to afford to stock this with everything everybody wanted, no, right? So no, how no. could you possibly do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> so okay, so now your plans for the future, like, okay, we know where you started, we know kind of where you are, and all the businesses that you and Cody run and all the juggling that you do, what's next? Like, I mean, I know you're gonna continue running your business, but I know you have to have dreams and things oh, like yeah, that. Oh big dreams. That's what I love yeah. about you guys. You're always thinking, forward thinking. We, we love, I mean, this is future thoughts. It's not happening right now, but future thoughts, we'd love to build a, a bigger store kind of in the same area that we are we really like that area and we mm -hmm. think it's a good spot for people that are you know traveling down 95 to stop in you know but we'd like a bigger a bigger building obviously and um, also add some business incubators to it and you know possibly put in like a coffee and a brew oh, shop yeah. and yeah. make it kind of a destination area right that you could Go get your hair cut in this little business spot, yes. and then come shop right here and get a little coffee or a beer right. to go or whatever right. you know that kind of thing. So that's a huge goal of ours with the business to kind of just expand it. We're right now with our store, we are a little maxed out on space, and right. so we would like to grow and have a bigger space. Right. I think you guys would crush it. I really do. I we've talked about it, and I've talked with Cody, and I always go back to like the old Lloyd's country store in Nampa, which mm -hmm. I can just see you guys. I wish that space was available because it was just perfect, but it had those things. And, um, that's just a great vision. I think it would be a great business plan. Yeah. So well, someday. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. So you don't have a deadline on that. <laughs> not, not a deadline. Cause we just haven't really figured out where or, you know, that kind of thing yet, but yeah. Just yeah. rip the Band-Aid off. I know. Let's I go know. find something for you to put it in. <laughs> Let's just rip the Band-Aid off. <laughs> I know he is. We have a really great uh, backup crew today, yeah. by the way. So, um, so now let's talk about um, let's talk about why we're here in Arizona, yes. and what crazy and how we don't really want to leave. We, just, <laughs> we miss home, but we love it here. <laughs> yeah, and we feel I know you do, but I feel so guilty because it's so cold at home and it's so beautiful mm -hmm. here but I know that I want to go home but I really like it here so it's yeah, just it's like hard. yeah such a yeah. feel like you want to be two two places two places <laughs> at once yeah so I mean you and I I we were supposed to be doing a barrel race down here and we were going to sponsor it I call Ricky and I said this hey was like the first of December yeah I yeah. go hey what do you think about coming and help you know sponsoring this race with me down there and she's like I'm in. She didn't even, she didn't even yeah, say. I was like, I'm going to figure out how to tell Cody after this, but I'm in. I'm, I'm in. Going. Yeah. Literally. So it was such a great idea. So then we both, we packed up 
I mean, Bob yeah. and I packed up at the beginning of December. He brought me down here with the RV. Mm -hmm. You guys came down. We came right after Christmas, like a few days after Christmas. And right. Got down here with all of our stuff, horses and the trailer and all the things. And yeah, luckily we have a great, great friend here that has let us basically take over her house for a couple months and it's been yeah. awesome. Well, and that's, I have been lucky and I was able to park our RV and our eight head of horses at my friend, our friend Jesse's mm -hmm. house. And so it's been a lot of fun and yeah. it's gone really fast. But so your boutique has done well here. So tell us yeah. about where, what you, how you've done it down yeah, here. I just kind of started with the people I had contacts with prior mm -hmm. and started calling and saying, Hey, can I set up? Can I set up? And it just kind of the ball kept rolling and I got calls from other places to set up and I've been pretty much I would say each week that I was here I did go home a few weeks at a time but right. each week I was here I was trying to work three to four days of that week and then ride horses the other days and so I I feel like I was kind of just getting to the arenas and you know I was in Buckeye quite a bit which was awesome uh, downtown arena which I loved and mm -hmm. Um, today we set up at Cowgirl Cadillacs I in know. Wickenburg, so that's exciting. So I, I feel like the ball just started rolling once I got here and just started building the network. Right. Well, and it's so crazy how many people we know that are down here. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I call I, it Ida Zona. I know. You can call it Ida Zona, <laughs> but then I have to be careful because I think about living in Idaho and how some people think about everybody from California coming to Idaho that like, <laughs> hey, maybe you guys should slow your roll a little bit. Yeah. I wonder if the Arizona people think like, the same whoa. thing about yeah. the Idaho people. Like... You guys yeah. could just back up a bit, yeah. but try to be respectful to that yeah. because, the, I mean, I have been because I just, I mean, I get it. I mm -hmm. get it, especially because now I have my real estate license down here, and I absolutely know that I'm not going to be able to just jump both feet and go into it because I want to be respectful of everybody there because I know there's yeah. a lot of agents here going, who the heck is she? Yeah. And why does she think she can come down here? Well, I definitely don't. I talk about learning curve. I mean... School was long and hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, holy cow, I haven't had to go to school for over 20 years. <laughs> and um, school, the test, all of it, I mean, the forms are different, the programs are different, but it has been a lot of fun learning this market. And it is similar to home, I would say, but um, I mean, this is the busy time down here. I mean, yeah. people are all down here. They see it you experience it and you're like, I just want more of it. Yeah. You know? So, um, and it's, it's a different living than we have at home. That wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. 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 I mean, there's well, lots of like, like cowboy camps. Would you call them that? They're maybe? everywhere. They're yeah, everywhere. Everyone's here to be cowboys and rope yeah. and ride and run barrels. And and run barrels. Yeah. I know, but just like this road, chuck wagon road is it's, like, it's amazing. Arena after arena er, after arena. Mm -hmm. It's, it's incredible. And horses and horses and horses. Like mm -hmm. at home, I can't just go, oh, just let me go to this one mile radius area and I'll have 10 places to choose from. Yeah. It's just not like that. Yeah. So here Very it cool. is. Mm -hmm. It's just really nice. But it, so um, I was lucky enough because somebody else let me go sit her open house, Stephanie Black, oh, who yes. she's licensed with EXP in Boise, married to Tim Black and also licensed down here and they live in Wickenburg Ranch and she let me sit uh, one of her open houses the other day and it's really cool. Also just a whole different world, that golfing community. It's amazing over there, it's beautiful. I know, it's, it's so much fun, like yeah. I, the pickleball courts. I mean, anybody that wants to be in the sunshine and be active, you don't, there again, you do not have to have a horse. No, like, there's so much to do here. So much to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know I can't, I said today to Jan, I feel like I didn't get everything accomplished that I want to get accomplished before I go home because we've either been like with the trailer selling or we've been riding our horses and roping. I'm like, I didn't really go do like the shopping I wanted to do and go get the cool artifacts and, you know, do the, the trinkets and all, you know, right. all this stuff. Well, so. and I told Cody, I said, oh, I still haven't got to go ride my horse in the wash down by Rancho Rio. Oh, I'm yeah. like, and I'm like, where can I do that? He told me, I'm like, I, I'm going to have to cram that in. Yeah. I got to go do that. <laughs> cram all these things in. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so there's a lake here, like Lake Pleasant that people mm -hmm. can go to and hang out on, which I didn't know. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I just, there's I feel casinos. Like it, I feel like it takes like years and years before you really explore it all. Yeah. Because you're just kind of, you, and once you get here, you, there's so much to do right where you're at, at yeah. that you don't really get, you don't really venture out that yeah. much. So. We have ventured out a little bit more this year than I ever have. Well, because I've been fortunate enough to be able to show some property. Mm -hmm. So I've been down to Maricopa. 
I've been to Buckeye. I've shown stuff in, um, in this little golf course community, co community called Sundance and, and Wickenburg Ranch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I, I mean, I can just see. Yesterday we drove through the Grand, which is right in Surprise. There were, kid you not, probably 50 golf carts. And there's golf course park or golf cart parking at the, at the CVS. We had to go to the drugstore. <laughs> <laughs> And there's like golf cart parking. I'm like, this is dialed in. Yeah. The restaurants have golf cart parking. Yeah, it's crazy. So, it's so fun. Yeah, super fun retirement community. So, all right, back to uh, what you're going to do this weekend. And before we all decide that we're heading back north, mm -hmm. Frosted Cowgirls is going to be at the uh, wow. Cowgirl Cadillac, which is a really big horse sale where a lot of women go. Well, not all women go to buy, but all the women, all the um, consigners are women. And one of our friends has three horses in yeah, it. So in order to go to Cowgirl Cadillacs, you sponsor a horse. So I was fortunate enough that I got to sponsor um, Megan's horse, Whiskey. I was going to say, was it so, Whiskey? Yeah. Yes. So I get to sponsor him and have the booth there um, under his his name and her name. So, I, yeah. That'll be fun. So that's like an event. So that's the other yeah, thing. Like there's excited. so much fun. Last weekend they had the title fights, which was huge. Mm -hmm. and. That's a qualification to make it to Vegas mm -hmm. in the team roping. And shout out to my nephew because he qualified, so I was super happy for him. It's awesome. And uh, so that, there's always something to do down here, whether it be side-by-sides, any of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so this weekend will be uh, the Cowgirl Cadillac, which will be a super a lot of fun. We'll be there. Maybe we'll get some video footage yeah. of all that. Yeah, I'll definitely show videos of the booth and everything around. So yeah. it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm you're going to do that. really well there. It's, it's going to be exciting. So I feel like I need to do a couple things as far as featured properties in Idaho. We do have um, Syringa, which you guys will see everything on. They will bring it up and post it. But we did do another price reduction on that cute property on almost it's like a third of an acre in Caldwell, dropped it to 310. Two bedroom, oh, two bed, so cute so inside cute. too. And it's got a detached like shop garage thing. And I just would like to see that get under contract and somebody go in and love it. So that is um, an Idaho property uh, feature. And then here I've got to feature that house that I was, um, that I was fortunate enough to set the open house. Amazing. It's 3267 Buckaroo Court. It's listed by Stephanie Black. Um, they're asking 710, but you're, I mean, got a spot for your golf cart, your well, car. the restaurants in there and the yeah. exercise facility, the pool. I mean, there's just so much to so do much. there. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And it's definitely a community. Like with sitting in there, we learned a lot just from the people that came through. And everybody knows the floor plans. Everybody knows. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm really, I really need to study this. So. Yeah. That's the one, like I said, the one thing I've done down here is I've just, it's such a learning curve. And part of the reason I want to go home, I, or not, I'm like, at least I know what the heck I'm doing there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that's, and that's kind of here, like I've, I've pulled into places and luckily I have a pretty good network. I, a few people from home said, did you kind of have to start over? Did nobody know who you were? And I'm like, well, no, our network, our Instagram, our social media expands yeah. so far that people knew who we were I was getting mm -hmm. people coming in and oh my gosh you're in you're in Arizona right now yeah. and which was awesome but it's just such a learning curve to get to these shows and you know because I've, I've been going to the same shows so many years in a row that we just know where we park we know where we go we know right. who we talk to we know yeah. so it's been kind of like humbling to say who do I even contact here does it and right. I feel like that was back in the beginning right. so I'm like oh man I just got humbled again and now I know yeah like now I've got my feet wet here and there's still so much to learn. Yeah, so. that, I, I feel exactly the same way and very respectful to everybody here because I don't, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. as you are. Yeah. But I know that your online presence has been great because one of the days that I was in your trailer, literally a lady from Colorado, ca then a Canadian, ca there were quite a few Canadians that day uh, in Buckeye, mm -hmm. Colorado, Montana, and the majority of them had seen you online. Yeah. And which was really cool. So yeah, she's been fun. And then when the one day at Dynamite Arena, I had some guy ride by and he was super disappointed it wasn't you. He's like, <laughs> I just wanted to see the Frosted Cowgirl. I'm like, sorry to disappoint. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. I said, I'm just this, I'm a fill in yeah, for Jan the day. helped a few times when I had to go back uh, to Idaho to see the girls. Yeah, so. but no, it was fun. And I, I, I did it just because I wanted to. It been 
to go meet the people. That was the yeah. whole idea, just yeah. to get out and meet people. So, well, Ricky, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for and having me. Of course, and we have to shout out to Cody, Jordan, and Rainey mm -hmm. for being our uh, camera crew yes. and all the things. So, but yeah. I look forward to seeing you back in Idaho and um, making plans for coming back down here next year. For sure, yes. Thank yep. you so much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Please remember to subscribe, rate us, and leave a review. And please follow us on Instagram at Larison Real Estate. I'm Jan Larison, and keep pressing on.